Welcome back to Arcade Restore New. I'm LJ, and I know I said that we were going to work on uh, stripping the paint from the other side of the cabinet, but my nitro plugs got a hole in them. My uh, paint scraper is still haven't arrived, and I'm running low on citrus strips. So what I figured we'd do in this next episode here is just work on a couple of smaller tasks around the cabinet. Um, the first one, which I'm hoping will be easy, I thought the stripping was going to be easy, and it wasn't, but. <laughs> This one I'm really hoping should be straightforward is there's this ashtray down here and um, you want to figure out how it's connected and just take it off. So let's dive in and see if we can't figure that out. So here you see the ashtray and the weird thing is like from the front there's not really a ton in terms of mounting hardware. If I come up here, see if I can get you the angle, it looks like there's a couple of bolts in there. So, I think we're going to head around back and see what we see. Yep, looks like there's just a pair of bolts going through with washers on them. I'm thinking maybe we'll get the socket wrench and see about getting those off from the front. Well, with the ashtray out of there, uh, the next thing I thought might be a little easy to look at is to take a look at what the situation is with this marquee. Um, obviously, um, they've got a marquee in there. It does look like it's translucent, but there's no light. I don't know if it's a bulb or wiring or what. So let's open it up. There it looks like there's one, two, three Allen bolts uh, under there. So let's get those out and see what the deal is. Alright, now we've got those bolts off, and uh, okay, bunch of nothing in here. Oh, let me grab the camera and bring it in close and grab the flashlight, and we'll see what we see. Alright, yeah, we've got a pair of wires going into the power switch. Okay, so those are running the power switch. And there are a pair of leads coming off of them, but they're not connected to anything. So I think from some of my reading, what we're going to want to do is run something that can take 120 volts straight from the wall. Oh. <sighs> I think ArcadeShop.com had a, uh, a fluorescent fixture that might, maybe it would sit down here in front of the speaker. Huh. But uh, basically, uh, there's just no, there's no light in here. <laughs> it's just missing. I, I can't imagine why whoever converted it would have gone through the trouble of getting a translucent marquee, um, which honestly, even, yeah, it looks like it might have been, uh, you know, customized or handmade or something like that, but there's this translucent marquee for a system that just doesn't have a light. <laughs> Um, so add it to the list. We're going to have to put a light in there. So I had been debating whether or not I wanted to try and get this working as a Dodge City before I convert it over to JAMA. Um, and when I was doing the ashtray, I noticed this. Uh, there's a bunch of just randomly cut, dangling wires just going to nowhere. It it makes no sense. Uh, I have no idea what's going on here. So, I think that kind of answers that for me. Um, and I think that we are just going to go ahead and wire it for Gemma as soon as I get all the parts in. So, this mess of spaghetti is a Gemma connector. So basically, 
on a lot of arcade boards, this was the standard in the 80s. One connector to connect the entire arcade cabinet to a board. Obviously, <laughs> this is what I want inside my cabinet. Uh, you can find Rygars with JAMA connectors. There's also adapters for original Rygars over to JAMA. But honestly, once I have it wired up for JAMA, it can be whatever the heck I want. Now, the thing I need to contend with is the video. So this bundle here is power and video. And so you can see here, the video is configured with one sync line, that's the white line, and then ground, blue, green, red. So that lines up with exactly what that monitor board wants, except for the sync line. It wants it split into two. Now if you notice, this connector gets thin right around here, right around that sink. So my understanding is basically that is specifically so that you can break off that sink connector, split it, wire it to both the horizontal and vertical parts of a different Molex connector, and wire it into this exact type of board. So, we know how power works, we know how video works. Controls, that's going to be a whole process. Building out a custom control panel. But like I said earlier, I think at first this thing's going to run a Pandora's box. And the Pandora's box I'm looking at getting has a USB port on it. So, I think near-term goal is going to be get a light in here, get the Pandora's box, wire this thing up with new Molex connectors so that it's wired to power, uh, it's wired to power, it's also wired to run the screen, and hopefully we can connect it up to the speakers. Um, and then, theoretically, we could just add a USB a video game controller, uh, probably any kind of standard USB controller would work. I've got probably 30 options sitting in this room. So I think the idea would be just to get an image on the screen, sound out of the speakers, see if we can get something playable on here that's not video poker. <laughs> So before we continue with installing the JAMA harness, there's two things we need to address. First is, we've got this big CRT, it carries lots of volts, we need to discharge it. Now I'm not going to show you how to do that because I am not an expert. I'll link in the description a video from TNT Amusements that I'm using as my guide for discharging the CRT. Now the second thing is, I'm starting to take apart this housing, but at the end of the day, the power cord here is in pretty rough shape. Um, it's pretty old. There's a piece of cardboard that kind of sits between the contactors um, that's falling out. And so one of the first things we're going to do is replace that power cord before we do anything else with JAMA. So let's get started. So as you can see, I've brought my soldering kit over to the machine. Um, not really sure what else to do because if we look here, the um, this is the original power cord and it comes through this hole, goes right into this fuse, um, so the hot wire goes into this fuse, the cold wire goes into this left side, and the hot wire from the fuse goes into the right side, and the ground wire goes into the middle. And those are all soldered connections. So, in order to remove them, I have to solder them. And there are no sort of disconnectable wires over here at this point that I can see. So, um, my best thought is to do it in place. So, I'm going to turn the soldering iron on. And I also have my new wire. And this has basically standard three pin plug on one side and three wires on the other side and that's all it is. I have already pre-tinned the wires so I think the first step is going to be removing this old cable and then we should just be soldering the new wires in place.
old busted plug out of the way. All right, I was able to at least get it out enough where it can actually rest here, which I think is going to be helpful. All right, and now this piece sits in that channel, goes right there. And now the only thing I'm probably going to want to do at some point is just put like a little strap across here to make sure that the wire doesn't go anywhere. But we're not going to be really moving this thing around while it's plugged in or having a lot of foot traffic, so I'm not that worried about it at the moment. Alright, so now we need to deal with this part of the JAMA connector. This part is the part that connects to the video. So you've got red, green, blue, ground, and per the JAMA standard, this one is um, negative composite sink. But you'll notice that this can be broken off. So we're going to crack it off because our board can take negative sink, but it needs both a horizontal and a vertical component. In addition, when it takes negative sink, there are two different pin inputs. One is one, two, three, four, five, uh, and then, or sorry, one, two, three, four, the RGB and ground. And then it has horizontal and vertical positive sync. 
horizontal and vertical negative sink are in a different type of the board, a uh, different part of the board. And so we've got to kind of get this one out of here and then put that into a new three pin Molex connector. Well, not having any luck getting this thing to break apart, but it kind of doesn't matter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to snip the sink line really close to the pin. Alright. And then oh, work on getting that into a new housing. So we've got our RGB ground on this wire and then this wire is going to be our sink. So the problem I'm running into is that the connectors that I bought are way closer spaced together than the connectors that the monitor needs. So I'm trying to figure out a solution. What I think I might be able to do is a little weird, but let me show you. This is the video connector for the old board. Uh, I don't need it. And at the end of the day, I have two signals that need to be generated. I think what we're going to do is I'm going to take a sec to set up, and then we'll strip two of these wires, the ones that are on the proper side. The extra here can just hang over the edge. But basically, that connector up top for negative sync is three pin connector. We need to go and validate which of the pins um, I need to tie into. All the other ones will snip off and then this can pop in and hang over the edge. So the top two pins of that three pin connector are our horizontal and vertical negative sync. So I'm going to snip these three. Because the way that this is going to sit in the cabinet is going to be red, green, blue, and ground, kind of running up the neck board like this. Then this one, which is in the top set, a ground pin that in everything I've read does not need to be populated. And then these two are going to be our sink lines. So they're both just going to plug in kind of like that. Since I'm not going to use any heat shrink, just to be safe, just throw a little electrical tape around them. Right. Okay. Now, we are going to need to do a little work on the JAMA harness for the sound circuitry as well kind of a quick disconnect connector up there that uh, runs the sound circuitry but honestly given the, what we've done I would like to hook it up to power hook it up to wire um, hook it up to the monitor and hook up the jam uh, the Pandora's box and just see if we can get an image on the screen all right we've got our jamma wired up to power Oop, there she is and our janky semi bodge wire into the monitor. So, I think the only thing left is to grab our JAMA board. Alright, I've got this JAMA board that I got off of eBay. And one thing I noticed is the JAMA edge has a part side and a solder side. So, part side is, you know, usually on a circuit board, the part where the components are showing, 
and then on the back where there's no components and there's just traces would be solder side uh, not really sure on this box uh, I'm gonna assume part side is just kind of up uh, since there looks to be a little fan hole and stuff here oh all right now for the moment of truth okay power switches up here here goes nothing Sorry. Usually it takes a sec to come on. Ooh. Oh, there's some sort of signal. Ooh. Yeah, there's something. Uh, doesn't look correct. There's definitely some sort of signal. Looks like we have sync problems, maybe? Well, well, well. It ends up that all I had to do was adjust the vertical and horizontal hold potentiometers on the back of the monitor to figure out sync and... Oh, wow, that bill acceptor noise is going to drive me nuts. Give the monitor a second to warm up. We've got an image. Now, i got to figure out why the image is not quite adjusted properly there. I assume there's more potentiometers in the back that I can flip to try and figure that out. Well, it ends up the Pandora's box has a settings button, and if you just hold it during the boot, it will force it into standard resolution mode. So yeah, this thing is uh, actually running something and displaying on the screen. Next up, we got to wire it in for sound. So the video issue ended up meaning that I had to adjust these potentiometers here on this board um, behind the monitor with the screwdriver. And I knew that um, there was a thing called horizontal hold and vertical hold that are related to uh, the sync signal and making sure that they're aligned. Um, however, what's really weird is I had thought that they would be the sort of things where, oh, I twist them and uh, things get better or things get worse. But in reality, they are more like uh, it's either in the right spot or it's in the wrong spot. Uh, from my experience and so I had adjusted them but once I uh, paid more attention and did a finer adjustment they started working so as for sound we have this little connector here that runs into the speaker so my thought is that I'm just going to disconnect that plug snip the end and solder that onto the JAMA connector for audio All right got sound wired in now made a couple of small tweaks to the uh, screen uh, just adjusted a couple of the potentiometers on the monitor board Obviously, there's a ton of work left to do. You need to build a control panel. Still need to strip this side. Deal with art and cleanup, but it feels really good to have something playable. I've got my RetroBit wireless controller plugged into the USB port there. Um, and so we can go around and check out games. This is just a... Uh, cheap Pandora's box that I grabbed off of eBay, loaded up with a bunch of stuff. Let's see. Damn showdown. There we go. Yeah, and so basically this controller will work fine. Ooh. It's a little loud. I am trying to figure out how to cut the volume just a little bit since this is in my basement. 
but as you can see everything's wired up and running which <laughs> is really nice and honestly this monitor um, it had a fair bit of burn in X pause this but this monitor had a fair bit of burn in um, when I got it but honestly when it's on at least uh, you can't even tell so yeah there was a bunch of burn-in from the uh, poker game so you'd see rectangles along here um, but I guess it wasn't that badly burned in because that's all cleaned up and this monitor is looking uh, pretty nice honestly right now so I think that's about it for this video um, next time I think we're gonna start working on stripping the other side and doing some of the cosmetics um, building the control panel we'll see when we get to but honestly it's gonna be tricky I'll show you why so this control panel that is here is metal right so there's not really a ton that I can do with that but what you'll notice is that here we've got this angle um, so my plan is to build a new control panel out of wood um, I just need to figure out how I get the appropriate angle um, I've got some tool woodworking tools but I need to make sure I have what I need to generate this kind of gentle angle here so what did I learn I learned that ashtrays are really easy to remove uh, I also learned that the JAMA wiring uh, the the colors repeat and so it's really important to just keep track and trace when you're whenever you're wiring something just go back to the harness find the line kind of give it a tug and make sure you know exactly where it's going to uh, before you wire it up and then the biggest thing I learned is that those vertical and horizontal sync potentiometers they're not really a range they're either right or they're wrong so you just got to kind of twist them back and forth until you see the lock um, and you have to go slow to make sure you don't miss it. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm really left realizing that with a lot of research and watching other folks, this stuff isn't that hard. And um, I'm left with a lot of confidence that I can complete this project. So thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys on the next one.